Hey, hey, protein synthesis part one. Go ahead and get off those notes. All right, what are we doing today? Look at the word. We are making proteins. Making protein. That's what it's all about, right? DNA is the recipe. DNA is the instructions to, boom, make proteins. Okay, so actually, you already know this. You just don't know how you don't know all the details that you want to know. Okay. From unit one. There's your cell. There's your DNA. Yes, you remember this. Okay. So DNA is going to unzip and make a disposable. Let's, let's, let's label this. Make a disposable copy of RNA. Okay. So. And we'll change colors here, and boom, there you got your RNA. So DNA unzipped made a disposable copy of RNA. Okay, the magic instructions, the wonderful master blueprint, which is DNA, is in the nucleus. And unless the cell's dividing in mitosis, it's always going to be in the nucleus. And so the process of DNA making RNA is called, boom, 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 ready, transcription. You see that in your notes? Transcription is the process of making RNA, specifically mRNA from the DNA. Okay, then you know this story, what's about to happen, you know. The RNA goes to the ribosome. Those little polka dots are ribosomes. The RNA goes through the ribosome and pops out a protein. So mRNA goes to the ribosome and the ribosome makes the protein. How does the ribosome know what protein to make? Well, because the DNA was the instructions to do so. So it told it how to. So DNA is simply the instructions to make the RNA. And then the RNA swims out to the ribosome. The ribosome reads the RNA and poof, you got a protein. So when RNA makes the protein, that's called translation. Can you see that in your notes? All right, so DNA makes RNA, that's called transcription. RNA makes proteins, that's called translation. Okay, so let's look at the details of it, though. First, George Beadle and Edward Tatum. Isn't that a funny group? Beadle and Tatum. It's funny last names. Okay, Beadle and Tatum were the people that developed this. You got one gene that makes one enzyme or one protein. So let's first identify what a gene is. A gene is, I want you to write this in. A gene is a segment of DNA. So a small segment of DNA is what a gene actually is. So if you look at like all your DNA, let's try that again. All your DNA is called your genome, G-E-N-O-M-E -E, by the way. But this segment right here, that would make the protein for insulin, per se. And this one might make the protein for melon, which makes your skin dark. Right? So one gene is a segment of DNA, and you have lots of genes in your DNA. Okay, so here we go. Transcription. You already know. DNA makes, write it out, DNA makes mRNA. So write that out for me. This is the process of making a recyclable, workable copy of DNA in the form of RNA. Specifically mRNA. And we're going to get into different types of RNA. But specifically we're making the message. DNA makes the message. Copy. Like a photocopy. mRNA is made by an enzyme called, you guessed it, RNA polymerase. Remember that DNA polymerase made DNA. So it only makes sense that RNA polymerase would make RNA. Some things in science are easy. So this piece of RNA is made 
by the enzyme RNA polymerase. And you can actually see it right there. Uh, no, you can't. Sorry. DNA is going to unzip, and right there, there's your RNA polymerase. I drew it in. RNA polymerase. And it's going to make the RNA. So there's your RNA right there. And that's in a prokaryotic cell. The bottom picture is in a eukaryotic cell, right, with organelles. You know that eukaryotes have organelles. Okay. DNA unzips, RNA polymerase makes RNA, and then DNA zips back up and is used again. Okay, the message, RNA, mRNA, will be sent to the, you can see it right here, ribosome. RNA nucleotides use ribose, R-I-B-O-S-E, which is still a five-carbon sugar. But instead of using deoxyribose, it uses ribose. It also doesn't use thymine. It uses uracil. All right, the, re the only reason that it uses uracil is because thymine is fat. Thymine is a chubby nucleotide. And so it can't fit. See, thymine couldn't fit out. Ugh, can't fit. See, can't fit. So it replaces it with uracil, and uracil can go on out. So uracil is a skinnier nucleotide. mRNA is a single-stranded molecule, therefore it is less stable. So RNA is a single-stranded molecule. It's less stable. It probably evolved first. Okay, on B it says DNA serves as a template for making RNA. A pairs with U, C pairs with G. Transcription is considered to be the first part of making the protein, protein synthesis. All right, so here's... Um, DNA and then RNA you can see so that's RNA right there it's um, it's shorter well it's not shorter it's half so it's half of RNA is half of DNA but there you can see deoxyribose on the bottom and ribose on the bottom let's see can you see the difference in a uh... yeah so you can see that thymine is skinnier than uracil also Okay, moving on. There's your transcription. You can see um, the function is in the name, like script. You are rewriting a script. Rewriting a script. So DNA makes RNA. That is transcription. There's your Chargoff's rule. A pairs with, in this case, U. All right. Next, we got translation, and that's where we're making a protein. So making a protein, the process of taking from one language and changing, you're translating. So transcription was just rewriting. Translation is like you're changing it into a different language. In the process, you're going from nucleotide or DNA into amino acid. So remember, amino acid is what? builds proteins. The process occurs at the ribosome. So here is, oh man, we don't have a good picture. Here we go. Let's go back to this original picture here. Okay, the RNA, if you look right here in this section, the RNA, which is the pink and yellow, goes to the ribosome, which is brown in the picture. And that's going to pop out a polypeptide. So remember for me that proteins, so I want you to write this over on the side. Proteins are made of amino acids. Okay, and then I also want you to write a large protein is called a poly. Peptide. And that's all review from the first unit, but I just want to make sure you got it. Okay, so the this process occurs at the ribosome. The ribosome has a nickname, the translator. So the ribosome makes the protein. And you can see it down there in brown. Translation is considered the second part of protein synthesis. So protein synthesis has two parts. 
transcription and translation. Okay, so here's just a little more details about translation. A codon is three letters, so three nitrogen bases, like A, U, U. It says the triplet code is the RNA language that we will be translated into polypeptides. Codons are three letters, a three nucleotide sequence of RNA determined by the template strand of DNA. Okay, so the codon, I want you to write this in because it's not on there, is codon is on the RNA, the mRNA. Codon is on the mRNA. Okay, so here's your codon chart right here. And so U, 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 for example, the first one, U, 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 would pair and make the amino acid phenylalanine. So that's just an example. Um, and you don't have to know what, those, what the amino acids stand for. But you do know already there's 20 different amino acids, and you can see them on the, the picture if you want to pause it and count them. But like GUU pairs with valine. So the RNA is the instructions on how to make the protein. Okay, so there are three essential things you need to know about the genetic code for RNA. The RNA referred to the mRNA and is must be read 5 to 3, same as DNA. It must be read 5 to 3. So it goes through the ribosome, your mRNA goes through the ribosome. We'll keep it brown because it was brown in the picture before. There's your ribosome, and mRNA is going through it. goes through the ribosome 5 to 3, just like DNA is built. Most amino acids have more than one codon. And you can see, I mean, look. Um, like valine that we just gave the example for has 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? Do you see that? So most of them have more than one. Therefore, the genetic code is redundant. It's repetitive. You know, there's only A, T, or A, U, C, and G. So you got to pair those up and make 20 different amino acids. 61 of the 64 possible codons. So you can see right there, um, they actually code for amino acid. The other three don't. Four refers to the four nucleotides, A, U, C, and G. AUG is always start, so I want you to know that. AUG is always start. So let's see if we can find that one. AUG. Oh, right there. I've drawn all over it. AUG is always start. Okay, and then it tells you stop. UAA, UAG, UGA. This chart is universal for me and you and plants and mushrooms and bacteria and all living organisms. Okay, and then six says the codon will match the anticodon sequence in the translation. So inside the ribosome, the, the ribosome is going to match it up with what's called the anticodon. The ribosome is going to match the RNA. So the RNA has the codon. The anticodon, let's write this in on six. Anticodon... is on tRNA. So write that in for me. Okay, reading frame. This term refers to a set of three consecutive nucleotides. All right, so we're going to go over this again in class tomorrow, but um, make sure that you understand for sure. There's two parts to protein synthesis. There is, let's go back. This is the most important picture. Two parts to protein synthesis. There is transcription, where DNA makes RNA. And then there's translation, where RNA makes the protein. So I really want you to understand that tomorrow when you walk into class. And then we're going to go into the details again. I hope this was helpful.